So um, the cell size does not have to be 6. Cluster size does not have to be 7. You could have cluster size of 4, cluster size of 7 that we saw, 19 and so on and so forth. Okay. So now mathematics comes in. So I got to do play my academic part. So what if the cluster size is x? What is it that you get, right? So here it is. <coughs> if you have radius r of the cell and um, radius r and you have n is the number of the cells in the repetition pattern, cluster size. Okay, so we already showed you two ex three examples, n equal to 4, n equal to 7, n equal to 19. If n is the cluster size, d is the distance between the centers of the adjacent cells. So this is, d is, if this is little uh, r by 2 is the radius here, right, r is the, r is the radius, sorry, r is the radius itself, then d is the distance, little d is the distance between the centers of the two cells. And capital D is the distance between the centers of the cells which have the same frequency. So this is how far they are. Right? So there is a formula for it. First of all, n is equal to n must be i square plus j square plus ij. Take any value of i, take any value of j, put it in there. Whatever you get, those are the only feasible values of n. Okay? If you put i equal to 1 and j equal to 1, what do you get? 3, right? So that is one possibility. And go on putting more and more. 2 plus 2 give you 4 plus 4, 8 plus 4, 12, so on and so forth. Anyway, somewhere you will get 7, 2. I mean, I don't know what value is, but you, know, you will get 7, 4, 7, and 19, like we saw there, okay? So possible values are 1, 3, so 4, 7, 9, and so on and so forth. So this is a series by itself. There is no name for this series. But the reuse ratio is that what is the distance between the ratios? So the, 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 the radius is r and the distance is d. The reuse ratio is the square root of 3n. And um, so if you are given n, then you can take a square root of that and that will tell you how far can you go times this cell radius. If you want to calculate the distance between and the ratio of d and little d, that would be a square root of n. Now you can easily derive this with the geometry, it's not that big a deal. But um, all I need you to know is that there is a, such a formula and that you know you can use it, yeah. What is capital R? I. Oh, I is any number, any integer, and j is any integer, any integer. So it says I is. 0 through whatever number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and j is any number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We put i and j some values. Whatever comes out, that is the cluster size. n is the cluster size. So if you want a cluster size of 5, that is not possible. Okay? Only cluster size of 1, 3, 4, 7, and so on and so on are possible. And so the cluster size are always i square plus j square plus i j for some value of i and j. Frequency reuse example. So here is an example that if the cell radius is 1 kilometer and the reuse factor is 12, what is the distance? So you are transmitting only in 1 kilometer. So after 12 kilometer, after 6 kilometers, the same frequency will be used. <coughs> right? Same frequency will be reused after 6 kilometers. Capital D is 6 kilometer. And you get that 6 kilometer by this formula square root of 3n. 3 times n is 12. Square root 36. Square root is easy. 6. So homework. What is the cell radius for a cluster size of 12? So here we are trying to figure out r given d. Just the opposite of the previous problem example easy. Now, um, so right, right nowadays we don't use frequency domain. We use OFDM and things like that, right? CDMA and OFDM and things like that where, you know, we use a big band. We don't use 30 kilohertz channels anymore. 
So whatever you use, you get a band. And then you can use the same band in some other cell. But we don't use it in the same cell. In the, in the same cell, we use multiple bands. We have sectors. So, if you assume that you have three sectors and you are going to use three different frequencies, you know, so one actually different frequency in each and, and your cluster is size is one. So, the, basically you are going to just use the same in every, every cell. So, you are not going to use cluster size seven or any cluster size is one. So, this is what the picture looks like. So, you see here I am using red frequency, green frequency, blue frequency. In the next sector, I am not using red or blue, I am using green. Why? So that it does not interfere with that other cell. Okay. So the sectors are arranged such that they do not affect the nearby sectors. So if you calculate the number of cells per cluster and number of sectors per cell and number of frequencies per cell, that is the number you specify n times s times k. So, when you say, well, in St. Louis um, near um, Bashu, we are using 1 by 3 by 3, which means we are going to use just one, in every cell we are going to repeat it, okay? And we are going to use, next thing is s, we are going to use three sectors. It could be, you know, any number of sectors, it doesn't have to be three and there is no mathematical formula how many sectors you can use, you can use 4, you can use 5, you can use 6, you can use 12. As many antennas you can put, you can have the sector. Alright, so 1 times 3 times 3 means that I am using 3 sectors and then I am using 3 frequencies, so that's easy. Then I use 1 frequency per sector. And by the way, this looks very nice picture, but in the real world, these pictures are not a square or a hexagon or anything like that. They have to do a survey because the hills and there are things which will mean that your sector cannot go as far as you want it to go. You know, it will go somewhere less in a hilly area and, and more in an open area and with the trees it will go less. So, they really have to do a survey and then decide, you know, where to put the towers. Okay? So, the actual map is very, very ugly. Any questions about this? Yeah. Where is the sectors? It is what? The sectors basically. The vector. Uh -huh. I mean, the K is shown. K is shown. K is the number of frequency allocations. Yeah. Yeah. Red, yeah. yeah, actually, what you are saying is right. Basically, I was thinking the same thing is that shouldn't I, they tell me that I am using one frequency per sector rather than three frequencies in the cell and three sectors in the cell? which is indirect way of saying then one, normally you would do that, right? And having said that, again, this is not really, really, I mean, like, you know, I could use two frequencies in one sector and one frequency in the other sector, so it is not, has to be in evenly divided. Things are much more complicated in the real world. Basically, when you, if you are facing Vashu, most of the two are in the Vashu and then the other side, there is nothing. You might have, you know, more frequencies on this side than the other side. Right? So, things are more complicated, but for the time being, you know, for simplicity, we are, we are showing you some things. And um, by the way, this is something that um, is real too. So, I worked with Biomax Forum for four years. Some of this knowledge I gained there actually. So, the people are talking about, oh, we have this frequency 1 by 3 by 3 and I am thinking, what is 1 by 3 by 3? So, I am just giving you that knowledge back here. Yes, that, you know, if you go in the real world, they will talk about like this and you have to know what it is, what they are talking about. Alright, here are other ones. 1 by 3 by 1. So, we are going to use the same frequency in every sector, but I am going to have three sectors. Or 1 by 3 by 3, in which I will have, this was the previous one anyway, 1 by 1 by 1, where I am just going to use um, same frequency. Now, in this picture, I have also shown what they call SS, subscriber station. Alright? So, subscriber station is going to get, if you have this kind of thing where 1 by 1 by 1, they are going to get, how many signals are they going to get? They are going to get a lot of signals. They are going to get a signal from their tower and from the nearby tower and from the tower over there. Right? 
So there will be a lot of interference. So what you do is you design your frequency pattern, your transmission pattern. Now they are designing antennas such that this signal will be very weak by the time it crosses that boundary. Okay, and you can do that. All right, so, so the thing is, even though they are the same frequency in each cell, the subscriber station at the boundary will have some problem because they will get from this and, and that at the same time, same thing. And so then we discussed as to how to handle those subscribers. Okay, and we, but most of the other people will get one strong signal and that is what they will lock on to. 3 by 1 by 1, 1, 3 by 3 by 1, and 3 by 3 by 3. All right, please look at all of these if you have any question about any of these. Yeah. So here, this the cluster size is 3. Right, the first number, right? The cluster size is 3. So you see, this is 4, 5, 6. And the 4, 5, 6 happens here again. Not, not in the, anywhere around it. Right? And so, four, and so 1, 2, 3 happens here, and 1, 2, 3 happens there, right? So the cluster size is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. Those are three clusters. And then we repeat some kind of thing. So three cells in a cluster, three sectors in a cell, and three frequencies per cell. Yeah, so these three are same. Basically, we are repeating this. OK, I, I, I'll add maybe this is your second question. 4, 5, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. There might be 4, 5, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9 here. 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 1, 2. You know, just repeating that kind of thing, you know, they are repeating that kind Is that the question? No, I didn't get the question yet. Okay, what is the question? What you just said is basically the cluster cell relating to the whole hexa. Uh, I mean, the... Uh, a cluster is this. No, no, hold on. First of all, you have to understand what is a cluster. Cluster is this. A repeating pattern, right? This is a cluster, right? I mean, if you go back to even first slide, this is a cluster. Blue thing is a cluster. Okay? All right. Now, it doesn't stop right there too. is because now, with the current antenna design, we can do something at the edges different from the center. So you could use three frequency inside the center in a cell and then use F1 at the edge, okay? Three inside the cell and F2 at the edge. And three inside the cell and F3 at the edge. So basically at the edge there is no confusion, in the center there is no confusion anyway. So I mean now the antenna design and the cell design is becoming more and more complicated but there is a name for this. This is called fractional frequency reuse. Fractional difference. So in, inside a cell, Different fractions of the cell, actually generally the boundary and the, and the edge and the core have different frequency pattern. It's the same tower, one tower though, right, in the cell. Yeah. What's the advantage of doing that? Oh, advantage, so basically in this case the problem was that the edge guide, the people who are here on the edge, they get exactly the same strength signal from both the towers. And that causes some confusion, you know, sometimes they lock onto this one, sometimes they lock onto that one, you know, they might be oscillating, okay. right? So in this one, that problem is not there. On that, on that previous slide, is the, is the frequency reuse, like, marked on there at all? Frequencies are marked. The numbers are the frequencies. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I see. Right? It's inside the cell, there is a small number, that is the frequency. I'll let fraction frequency reuse. So this is the homework for you and I will let you think about it.